Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. And this is going to be the video that probably has been the most requested on my channel. Every single live stream I do, every single video I get comments about it. And that is simply going to be to update my build video. And the thing is, um, yeah, I have a lot of different stuff that I like to run. So it's I, I was dreading making this video, quite honestly, because realistically, I just don't know if... Um, yeah, how to really do this video, but anyways, we're just gonna jump into it and we're gonna be talking about my light mage build Which is um, fire and ice. It is my one of my most comfortable builds that I love to run in wars um, And then we're gonna talk about my light melee medium melee and heavy melee setups What would be my preferred obviously perks and obviously this video doesn't have all the beast stuff It's usually a two beast to sometimes three beast setup, but um, if you have these items you will be able to perform really well in wars and yes this video is going to be focused about wars not about pve just to put that out there uh, but yeah let's jump right into it i have two accounts uh, both level 60 both grinded by myself obviously one was grinded during double xp weekend and uh, my second account is actually better gear score wise than my main account but that is none of the importance i think the best thing to go into it is just my midgard mage account okay so this is going to be the account you're looking at at the screen and when it comes to weapons you have a few options that are very simple to go for one of the best options right now is blackguards fire staff in my opinion uh, but another really good option would be a fire vine battle staff okay you can go for either of the two um, I would recommend you to go for Blackguard's Fire Staff if you see yourself mainly dodging with the Fire Staff equipped. If you see yourself, you know, using Ice Gauntlet a lot, then I wouldn't really run this. Um, and then obviously when it comes to Ice Gauntlet, you have an option for a Winter Wish or a uh, Blackguard's Ice Gauntlet. Once again, if you do not know where to get these items, you get, that in, you get those in Tempest, so the expedition right here next to me, Tempest, all the way up here, or in Genesis, alright? So that's how you get these two, and they're gonna serve you very well as a mage. Obviously there are uh, min-max better options out there, but you will probably be looking at spending about 500k to look for those 3 beast upgrades, okay? So these are gonna be your best friends if you're maging. And then when it comes to your actual armor, you have a few options. I am personally very much um, defending the refreshing evasion with the perk option. But some people are going to be like, yo, you want to run resilient or a defensive option. I personally do not run any defensive options. I go full aggressive when I play mage. Um, and that's why you will see my, me running Refreshing Invasion on every single possible piece. So if we take a look at a hat, Refreshing Invasion with Empowering fire, Fireball. Uh, body is Refreshing Invasion with Pillar of Fire on a medium. Um, light Glove is Refreshing Invasion and an Ending Thaw. Those are the three perks you're gonna need as a mage. An Ending Thaw, uh, Pillar of Fire and Empowering Fireball. You need those, obviously, if you run light like me. You need Light Hat. Uh, medium body and then everything else light as well uh, when it comes to the legs once again refreshing evasion with resilient This is the only time I'm gonna allow myself to go for a bit of a defensive perk The third one is whatever and then when it comes to boots you get those for free in tempest wise and shoes Absolutely beautiful you get the shirking energy, which is an amazing perk to have you get stamina when you dodge while in light um, if you're a hit uh, if the hit is avoided you get a refreshing on top of that and a nice little bonus of elemental aversion Wizened are amazing shoes to have at the moment uh, when it comes to amulet um, The best possible uh, amulet you could ever have would be health divine and stamina recovery um, Or I don't know if you can have health refreshing evasion stamina recovery both of those would work very well The stamina recovery perk is absolutely phenomenal um, as you can see when you're hit below 50% you gain basically full stamina bar Okay, so oftentimes you're gonna be caught and you're gonna be able to just dodge out of it It's it's a beautiful perk to have and then health obviously gives you more health therefore more survivability uh, When it comes to the ring uh, keen awareness is a must and hearty is a must in my opinion That's gonna allow you to have three dodges instead of two dodges um, The third perk here could be once again uh, Refreshing evasion or refreshing something like that would be a three beast option when it comes to earring once again nim is almost a must uh, the stamina regen bonus is you just notice it it's so 
damn good. You need it. Uh, when, and then obviously I have Refreshing Evasion here. Um, and then the third perk, if there's anything good that you can run with it, you grab it. Obviously, all of those three beast pieces are going to be super expensive. And if you can see, I don't mind if it's con piece or an intelligence piece. In Wars, you will very often see me run uh, 350, 150. That's my preferred way to go. You can run 300, 200. I would not recommend running that. Or you could run 450, 100, which is... A solid option, but once again, a very risky one. You're gonna see some people run, what is it, 505 or whatever? But that, that, that just, just don't do that. It's a complete int build. So have 100 or 150 constitution, play OPRs with it, see what works for you. For me, the sweet spot is 150 constitution, but you will see me run wars with 100 constitution as well. All right, other than that, this is going to be my mage setup. I mean, there's not much else to show it when it comes to the actual... Uh, trees. Uh, let's quickly take a look at the fire staff tree and this you'll see me change bits and pieces here every now and then sometimes I'm not gonna take arson's advantage and I'll take singe sometimes I'm gonna take uh, spell focus for example but realistically I think this is the build that I love to ward in wars. Um, this build will never run you out of mana whenever you're low on mana you're gonna use pillar of fire or basically the idea behind this build right is when you have someone caught in a gravity well, you're gonna go for a pillar, dodge, pillar, dodge, pillar, dodge. You may be wondering, wait, that's not realistic. How the fuck does that even happen? Well, with a full refreshing evasion perk, if you land it on three or four people, it will, and, and then you dodge after, and you do like a heavy attack, you're gonna be able to pillar again. Sometimes if you pillar enough people, you're gonna be able to pillar immediately after. So the build is basically focused on, like pillar is your main force of damage, and then fireball is your second main force of damage. Alright, so if you have that in mind, that is then why we're uh, choosing the build like that. If you're thinking about the third perk here, um, it's not that great. You could I, I, you, do you don't really want to throw anything away for this. So this is like tested and proven in like 25 plus wars at the moment. And some wars I've done it without Arson's Advantage and I had to drink some mana potions here and there. But with Arson's Advantage I never drink a mana potion. Everything else is pretty much a must obviously and I would always run it like that. When it comes to the Ice Gauntlet though, um, this is a standard. I would never change anything. Obviously you do want to have your Ice Storm and you need to have every single passive on the Ice Storm tree in order to get the ultimate chill. And then obviously you want to make sure you have the Frigid Showers when it comes to the Ice Shower. Definitely all the way down here. And when it comes to Ent tomb um obviously having an extra defense um after it breaks is very very beneficial so i would not substitute pretty much anything about that however there is a pvp ice gauntlet build that i like to run sometimes which consists of the ice pylon but for the sake of your mental i'm not gonna show this on the video because it is a full meme build okay i don't want people to run it in wars it's not worth it this is ideal um, and, and honestly, this is gonna get you far if you do wanna play Fire Ice. Okay, so, yeah, that's gonna be that. And now when it comes to, when it comes to the light melee, I also have that option here on this server as well. Um, but I don't think I should necessarily talk about it since, um, I don't have a fully maxed out Warhammer. But anyways, let's just do it. Anyway, so we have that, we have this, a Doom Chance, of course. Um, yep, and then we have, let's see, so my light setup is going to be a little bit b different on this account and a little bit different on my other account and you will see why. So here I basically go for Raider's Hat, which is a medium piece that makes me have to have light body and another medium piece on the legs. So you can go light as a medium hat, medium legs and then everything else light or everything light but body medium, all right? Maybe a little bit complicated, but still. So move this here, move this there. And this is going to be my uh, melee build. So we have a refreshing move thwarting strikes on a great X. You need to have those two perks. Those two perks are absolutely phenomenal, both on heavy, both on light, medium, whatever you're running, that refreshing move thwarting combo is the best combo on a great X. A beast great X would also consist of keen. However, I was lucky enough to find something that has a reap. And me, I'm one of the few people that actually runs reap on a light melee. Um, I run charge on medium and heavy, but on light melee we're running reap always, okay? And then obviously Blackguard's Warhammer, Hardbiz, 
um, you can't really go better than that so definitely get that in Tempest you can get it for free grind it out it's totally fucking worth it uh, when it comes to the Raider set obviously freedom resilient and refreshing there is hardly any pieces that are gonna be better than Raider's Head. You get this in the Tempest. Um, when it comes to my body, it is Leeching Path of Destiny Resilient. When it comes to my glove, it's gonna be a Refreshing Resilient and Sundering Shockwave. So a 3-piece light piece. When it comes to my um, leg wear, it's gonna be Insatiable Grab with Resilient. And when it comes to my boots, it's gonna be Refreshing Evasion Resilient. And then a nice little bonus of Empowering Armor Breaker. Now the important perks with the... Um, melee and um well with the with the warhammer great text are gonna be the insatiable gravity gravity well that's gonna be like the most important perk you need to have that one um the second best is gonna be sundering shockwave you absolutely need to have that one and then from there leeching path of destiny is very very nice when you run that in wars it's gonna heal you for pretty much max hp every single time you use it and then uh, Empowering Armor Breaker, for example, is completely useless as a perk, right? But it's a very good thing to take as a spell, like in the war. Um, but yeah, that's my light set on my Midgard account, okay? And uh, we're quickly gonna go over the perks in the Great X, uh, in the Great X tree. So this is going to be what I would run on a light melee Great X, okay? Light melee Great X... This is literally like the best that it gets. So full on Maelstrom, full on Reap. We go Bloodlust for the chase potential. We go the second perk in the, perk in the well to increase our damage for everyone that's caught inside. And all the other perks just make sense. Obviously, you can hover over them. You can read them for yourself. This is once again tested in 50 plus wars. And uh, yeah, this is like my favorite build to run at the moment. However, there are obviously also builds where the charge will be needed and that is going to be for the medium and heavy build okay so this is for the light okay you can you can save the, pause the recording save it make a screenshot of it right um but this would be like if you were a heavy or medium user i would run this so da -da -bim, ba -da -boom, ba -da -bam. and then i would also run like this and i would run like this and like that so you see how this is now a little bit different. This is for all you heavy medium users out there. Um, this is, once again, very tested. This is when you hold great decks, you get more damage. This is when you hold great decks, you get uh, damage absorption. Very good on a medium, very good on a heavy. Obviously, you need a charge. And then you go for all of these little perks. You're only missing executioner speed, really. Um, and this is going to be a very good way to go about your great decks. Um, so let me just get my usual back, bada beam and bada boom. So once again, since I am playing light on this server, this is pretty much the standard I go for. So like that, and then like this, and then this, this, and that. Uh, I did one too many somewhere here. There we go. And I like to run Maelstrom here, this, here, this, here. Okay, so this is going to be the great text. Perfect. But now we got to talk about the Warhammer, all right? And then the Warhammer, obviously, it's going to be a little bit different for me because I'm only 17 out of 20 on this. Uh, but still, let's quickly take a look for my... Um, so this will be for heavy or medium, all right? Heavy or medium, you want to be running Armor Breaker, guys. Do not sleep on Armor Breaker one of the best spells in uh, in the as a heavy or medium even as a light sometimes i really like to run armor breaker but as a light this wrecking ball is the thingy that is really nice to run for me as i get like the nice little pick potential but as a medium and heavy you land those gravity wells you armor break and then you go for your combos okay and this would be a very standard build path right here um okay so you take this 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 and that Okay, obviously I can't take them right now because I don't have enough points, but you are taking um, basically this, 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 all right, including all of those. So this, this, and that. And this would be ideal for mediums and heavies that are using Warhammer, okay? So I'm talking about this now. I'm not going to talk about this later. I will, however, leave all the little screenshots in the description of this video, so you can kind of save them if you would uh, so want. Um, but yeah, this is going to be when it comes to builds. Now you have the Great Axe, the Warhammer, the Ice Gauntlet, and the Fire Staff builds that I personally always run. Uh, but now if you made it this far into the video, um, I can also show you the... Um, I mean the, the 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 Warhammer when there is no leeching path of destiny needed. So when would you use that? This would be like a dual build. Um, so a little bit of a bonus, right? I said I wasn't gonna do it, but for a little bit of a bonus, this is what I would run. 
and this, this and that as well, those three here. So I wouldn't go for either Justice for All or Aftershock, this is the dual build, alright? So I would go this, this and that as well, these three here. And uh, yeah, that will be your perfect dual build. I can use this when I duel as a medium, as a light, even as a heavy, alright? So this paired with uh, Great X and you are pretty damn strong. Uh, we're gonna save this here. I usually like to run it like that. Alright, um, now I've pretty much told you everything about the Midgard account and about all the little trees that I like to run. Obviously when I run um, either light, medium or heavy, I always go 300 strength, 200 constitution. Alright, that's the standard. Uh, but now, I'm also gonna jump to my Dry Tree account, alright? And I'll show you what kind of gear sets I have there. This is always a question on every single live stream. I know the video is maybe a little bit long at this point, but for the people that are curious, I might as well show it. So on my Dry Tree account, I will have once again the Mage build because it's my like the build that I really like to run. Uh, but I'm also going to have a light melee, medium melee, and heavy melee. However, the medium and heavy melee are not really per even light isn't perfect. Okay, this account is actually older than my Midgard account. I would argue this account is worse than my Midgard account at, at the moment. You might be wondering why. I played this account before the Tempest release. So I do not have the Tempest drops just yet. Okay, so once again, when it comes to Mage, you're gonna see me run with um, the standard, you know, Fire Staff. Um, I mean, Fire Vine Battle Staffs, Winter Wish, Full Refreshing Evasion with Perks, Wise and Shoes. You see the... It's the same, it's the same idea. Here I have stem recovery health, again, super important. Heart in awareness, again, super important. I do not have nimble on this and I feel it, I regret it. But I have refreshing, regenerating and the mana toast. So I'm not really looking to swap this over. However, I definitely feel not having nimble. Alright, but let's take a look at the melee setup on this account because it is going to be a little bit all over the place. So first of all, let's go ahead and take our light set in consideration. So light set, light, light. You're gonna see me have 6 to 3 gear for the most part because I did all of that in OPR more or less. Uh... Oh yeah, that's my mage and that's my melee. Alright, perfect. Uh, and then obviously I'm running this, I'm running that. So this account still does not have uh, refreshing move thwarting strikes great eggs, but I have plague strikes, thwarting strikes and mortal fortification on this one. So it is really good as a light because you can roll around heavy attack, just one hit someone, they can't get healed. Um, but I still think I will I will definitely upgrade to the refreshing move one and then for Warhammer I have this which isn't good definitely grind out Tempest I will definitely be grinding out Tempest because I do plan on playing Wars on Dry Tree as well um, and obviously that Warhammer would be a lot better in this option however when it comes to my gear the Wardens guys is a free option as a light melee you get the refreshing resilient with it Luck is whatever, obviously, but this is like a nice free option if you do not want to spend your money just yet. When it comes to the body, I have, once again, Refreshing Resilient. Um, this time I have Repulsing Clear Out. I don't run it. I just have it for Refreshing Resilient. Back in the day, I prioritized Refreshing more than Refreshing Evasion. Nowadays, I would prioritize Refreshing Evasion Resilient more than the actual full-on Refreshing. Because you will be dodging all the time, alright? Here we have, once again, Refreshing Sundering Shockwave with a nice little bonus of Vigor. And then here we have Resilient Insatiable Gravity Well, and here we have Leeching Path of Destiny, Elemental Aversion, and Invigorated. Though. Not the best boots, but like Invigorated and Elemental Aversion kind of made me be like, yeah, whatever, even if I don't have Resilient here, it is what it is, right, it's fine. Um, definitely by no means a perfect light build, uh, not at all. If I were to upgrade this, um, I would go for Refreshing Evasion. Um, with resi on pretty much as many pieces as possible. But this allows me to have three resilient pieces, one vigor, one invigorated. Vigor is one of the worst perks in the game, but fuck it. And invigorated is also not that useful because you can just cleanse all of the debuffs in war. You'll see me spam cleanse all the time. When it comes to jewelry, okay, we have smooth bone ring. Uh, you get that in Lazarus. Definitely grind it out if you're a melee player. Nothing is better than a uh, smooth bone ring. And Doom Chance, definitely grind down the Genesis for this one. Once again, extremely good ring. Okay, definitely run it. And then when it comes to my amulet, we're running a refreshing evasion, health, and void protection. Nice little amulet, if I could say so myself. Um, yeah, I mean, th this amulet I can also run on my mage setup if I feel like it. If I don't want to go for the stem recovery one, I think both are really good. Um... 
but I usually just mix and match them, whichever one I think is better at the time. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much my light setup. Now we're going to be moving on to the medium. Okay, so once again for the light, we're going with the light headpiece, medium body, light, light, light. Okay, you can also do medium head, light body. One of these two has to be medium as well, and then light, light. All right, but the easiest thing to go for it is just have medium body and that's it. All right, let's move it up a notch, okay? And let's go ahead and take a look at what my uh, what my medium setup would look like, all right? So my medium setup, we need a heavy body. So let's go ahead and find it. I haven't been on this account in a hot minute, so it's going to take me a little bit to find it. Okay, so this is going to be heavy. Uh, this is going to be heavy for sure. Now we need gloves. Uh, so I think my medium setup is probably my best setup at the moment. Um... And I don't think I can really upgrade it too much. So this would be my medium setup. This is what this would be what I would probably run if I wanted to like really try hard in wars. And it goes like this: so heavy headpiece with a with a freedom and resilient. Uh, very nice to have some freedom pieces in wars, but not needed at all. Just the resilient is really worth it. We have the insatiable gravity uh, here on the legs. Still, this is same as my light set. Um, we have the crippling reap, which I don't need but i have resilient and shirking fortification on this okay so these are gonna be amazing um, whenever you can have shirking fortification with a resilient perk take it it's so useful in wars you get it procced all the time it's super good we have the sundering shockwave on the oh i see what we're missing here we're actually missing uh wait what am i missing here sundering shockwave insatiable grav am i missing leeching pod i am missing leeching pod so um on this build, I probably would just run Armor Breaker, or I just wouldn't have Leeching POD. It is what it is, right? Because the thing is, these Raider Boots are so good with Freedom, Refreshing Elemental Aversion. I mean, they're not so good, right? But they are okay for a free option. So, if I were to buy Medium Boots, I would probably buy a Leeching POD Resilient Medium Boots, and I would be equally satisfied. However, having two Freedom Pieces feels just very nice, and obviously everything else is Resilient. So, we have, what, four Resilient Pieces, two Freedom Pieces, one Elemental Aversion, and I think we have, what, one Refreshing? And then everything else stays the same. We have Refreshing Evasion on this, and yeah, this would be my Medium Setup, probably what I would run with in Wars at the moment. And then when it comes to heavy, obviously, we need to look into heavy right now. I think heavy is like by far my worst because I never run heavy. I personally find it extremely boring. So honestly, it's probably best if I wouldn't even show it. But anyways, since we are making this video, let's go ahead and show it. So it wouldn't be that. It could be this when I'm running Penetrating Wrecking Ball. Can I type heavy? I, I really wish the game allowed... Oh, I can. No, I can't. What the fuck? I really wish the game allowed us to have presets. So I could just click like a box and it would equip my entire like light melee setup. That's what I wish this game had. But anyways, let's just go through the whole list and find uh, whatever we are missing here. What do we got here? This is light glove, light. It's a ring. This is light. Um, this is void when this ain't gonna be it. Okay, so this is one of the options, but I don't think I run that. I run this. So we have leeching. Okay, let's just equip it. So we have leeching POD. What am I missing? We're missing legs. We are missing legs. So where are my heavy legs? I could also have them somewhere in the storage, but for the sake of it... You know what? I'm just gonna put the fucking void band pants on. <laughs> like, I just can't find them. There we go. Fixed. Alright, so let's just say I probably have a piece somewhere in the storage that I forgot to grab out because I haven't ran heavy in so long and I just quickly grabbed it for this video. But anyways, heavy headwear, okay? Freedom resilient, um, then we have Sundering Shockwave resilient, then we have Leeching Path of Destiny resilient. Wait, I'm missing Insatiable Grav though. Uh, Leeching POD resilient, uh, Penetrating Wrecking Ball resilient. I, I have to have a heavy legs with Leeching, uh, with the Insatiable Gravity Well and resilient. So instead of this Void Bend, think of it like Literally what I just said, okay? Uh, insatiable Grav and Resi. Uh, and then everything else stays the same, alright? So that would be like what I would run. Very basic, very simple, alright? And uh, I think I showed everything in this video. It might be just a little bit all over the place. But look, this video is out here. If you want to go over all my different builds, go for it. Um, it's now there and available for everyone to see. 
I really dreaded to make this video because I don't know how to record everything. I always mix and match and change my gear and buy new stuff and then everything else collapses and I gotta buy new, more new stuff and so on. But uh, more or less, I do get to explain kind of what I'm running. However, now for the very end, if you made it this far, if you have an option, get resilient with freedom or resilient with shirking fortification and the perk okay if you get that that would be a three bis if you get uh just resilient and perk that would be two bis uh, you can also sometimes run just freedom and the perk but i wouldn't recommend that on a heavy i would recommend refreshing evasion freedom and perk on the light sets um so for example if i ever wanted to improve my magic set i wouldn't go for Refreshing Evasion, Resilient, and Perk. I would go for Refreshing Evasion, Freedom, and Perk. Um, or Shirking for. I don't even know if I'd go for Shirking Fortification, but Freedom is very slept on, 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 on builds that are constantly dodging, constantly being mobile. The only time you really die is when you get stunned, stun locked, and what can save you out of that? Well, Freedom... I guess resilient maybe as well but uh, anyways those are gonna be all my builds okay everything's there um if you made it this far let me know in the comments if you want to flame my build go for it i'm all free to receive some flame but uh yeah that's what we got so far in all the months of playing new world and yeah hopefully you guys did enjoy this little video it definitely got a bit longer than i expected but you know what that's totally fine and uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you made it this far. I'll see you again very soon with another war video. And until then, have a beautiful rest of your day. Have a good one and bye-bye.